Okay. All right. So you want to know how to make these stylized trees or how to make this or this or that? Well, I'm going to be covering it in this video. I did the previous tutorial on this on making stylized trees and that one did uh, that one did really good. So I'm doing it again. But what's different with this one is that with the previous video, I didn't actually cover everything. But in this video, I'm going to say everything and not leave anything out. And then on top of making stylized trees, after that, I'm going to be covering how to make stylized assets. Any other kind of stylized thing, I'll teach you how to do it or how I do it and what my method is. So let's get to it. Starting out with the stylized trees. Okay, we're going to be starting out in Blender and not Roblox Studio because because we're cool builders. So we're going to start in Blender. Anyways, we're going to add a plane, rotate it up, and we're going to first make the leaf. We're going to have to make the texture for the leaf. So let's go to Photopea. Photopea is a free photo editing software. There's no download either, so it's just on browser. I'll leave a link in the description for this one. So we're just going to create a new one. Let's just do it by 900 by 900. Now, once you're here, we're going to be making our leaf texture. In order to do that, um, just make a bunch of leaves, you know, like facing this way. Make them all like this scattered around. You can make it something more intricate, like where I'm just doing these oval shapes. You can do different looking leaves, like maybe a maple leaf instead of just these ovals. But I'm just going to do ovals because this is just a tutorial. Or maybe you can do like cherry blossom flowers whatever and there you go made those ovals now we're gonna get rid of the background and then we're gonna make this white in order to do that i'm just gonna press Control u while having the leaf layer on or selected and then just make the lightness all the way up so now it's white we want white leaves there you go now that you have this white leaves in a transparent background that's what you want now let's save it file export as and then png all right going back to blender let's add in the texture so let's go to uv editing and then just click open right here and open up the texture here's my leaf texture now we're gonna add this leaf texture onto the actual plane how to do that is click on this red circle click new click this yellow circle circle next to base color, click image texture, and just click this little thing right here and click on the leaf texture. Now it should be added in order to see it. Click on this arrow right here next to these circles and then just select texture. There it is. Now going back to layout, let's try to use this plane to make our bush shape. So just spam this around, rotate it a bunch. What I'm doing is kind of random. I just do whatever. And then I look at it from every angle and just try to get like a circular looking shape. You know how like a bush is like circular. Like for example, I look at this one. This is pretty nice. Like it has like a nice circular shape. I'm gonna turn to the side here. This doesn't have as much of a circular shape. Like there's a bump here, but there's no bump on this side. So I'm just gonna edit it a bit here now. There we go. Look at that. This is how mine looks at every side. It's just a plain thing just spammed around in like a circular shape. Okay, now let's go back to object mode. For like a good bush, you want it to be like over here is really light and down here it's in shadow and it's dark, but it doesn't look like that. In order to fix that is we adjust the normals. I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to add in a sphere. So add mesh a UV sphere and we're going to put it like up here. Now what you have to do is select our, our plane or right here plane, which is our bush. Go to this wrench icon, click here, click add modifier, click on data transfer, this eyedrop and select the sphere right here. Click on face corner data, click the arrow next to it and then custom normals. It says enable auto smooth, which should pop up. So in order to do that, go to this green triangle right here, open up normals and then check auto smooth. And there you go. This should help it. This is like the first step in making it look better, but it still looks off. So just select the, the bush, change object mode to edit mode. And then we're going to click on this arrow right here and turn on face orientation. Now you should have like a side that's fully red and a side that's pretty blue, which I do here. Uh, if not, just look at any side. Uh, let's just look at the blue side right now. And you want this side to be all blue, but there's like this red part here showing. You want to make it blue. In order to do that is first select the part that's in red. So just hover over it and press L and there you go. And now I have it selected, press Alt N and click flip. Now this side's completely blue, or this side's completely red, which, which is what we want. And the size right here, they can remain as the same. Doesn't, you don't have to be too concerned about it. But anyway, let's just go back to object mode and that should be better. Now I'm actually gonna put the sphere in the middle right here. That actually just changes up how the shadows look. So just cover it completely. We can click on the here to just get rid of the sphere. But uh, there you go, look at that. And turn off face orientation. And there you go, now it's light up here and dark down here. Now we can export this and bring it in Roblox Studio. So just file, export, and let's just save it as an FBX. Now when you're back in Roblox Studio, just click on import 3D and open it from there and just import the bush. Now this might look weird. I'm gonna be showing you how to fix it. Yeah, it definitely looks weird right now. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show how to fix it. So just go to properties within the plane. The plane is the bush. So just go to properties and then you want to copy its texture ID. Go back to Explorer, click the plus next to plane and then we're gonna be adding a surface appearance. Click surface appearance and go to properties and paste this within color map. And then after we do that, change overlay to transparency. There you go. It's looking much better. That looks good. There you go. Now we just have to make some small changes to make it look even better. Now, if you turn around and look behind the leaf, there's nothing in order to fix that. Select plane, go to properties and just click the check mark next to double sided. Another thing I want to change is if you look at the leaves, there's like a black outline at every single leaf, which is so annoying. So for example, if you have like a tree from far away, all your leaves will have this black outline, which is so annoying. You don't want that. It looks weird. So I'm going to be showing how to fix that. 
in order to fix that, you're gonna have to download uh, the software called Pixel Fix, and it, it, it's just a quick download. This is the dev form about it, Pixel Fix. So this just goes in more in depth about what it is. And yeah, basically you just wanna find the down file. So Pixel Fix over here and just download it from here. Now I'll be showing how you use Pixel Fix. So you need the software and the actual leaf texture. So all you have to do is just drag in the leaf texture onto the Pixel Fix app and that is it. This pop-up will show and you just have to wait. Just wait till it says you can leave. So you just wait here. Do, 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 do. Waiting, waiting. There you go. When it says press any key to exit, just press any key to exit. And after that, you just want to re-upload this leaf texture. So let's go back to Roblox Studio. So yeah, just go to Roblox Studio, select Surface Appearance, go to Properties, and just re-upload the texture. If it doesn't give you the option to re-upload, all you have to do is just save the game. And to do that, just go to Game Settings, which is within Home. So just go click Game Settings. And then it doesn't show here in the OBS, but just save your game. It'll give you the option to save it. And then after you save it, now you can click on it. And then there's an add image option here. So just re-upload the fixed image. So now let's just see the difference. And there you go. See, that's with the and without the black outlines. You definitely don't want those black outlines. It's really annoying. But yeah, there you go, it's fixed. And you don't have to do this with just a bush. You can do this with any other texture that has a transparent background. So like anything in your game that has a transparent background, use this and it'll get rid of the black outlines. It's really helpful. Also, I forgot to mention that you can make your leaves even fluffier by making the leaf texture blurry. So how to do that is going back to Photopea, just select your leaf layer, then go to filter and then blur and then do gauge blur and then just do how much blur you want. And every time you make an adjustment to your texture, you're gonna have to do the pixel fix thing again. So just drag it in, press any key to exit and we have to re-upload this leaf texture. So go back to Roblox Studio and then yeah, just re-upload it again. So over here, you can see this is with no blur and this is with most blur. So it just gets more blurry. And you can see the more blur, the more fluffier it does look. I'm gonna go with the middle one because that one just looks the best. And the one on the right looks too fluffy. It looks like a cloud. Anyways, anyways, you might be asking, how do we change the color? Just go to surface appearance, go to properties and just change the color from there. I'm just gonna do a green color, normal tree. Now one more thing, you can see there's like a shine, like the sun sitting on the leaves and it's making the shine look, which I don't like. I'd rather have it look flat, like a drawing. In order to do that, go to toolbox and just go to decals and look up white. So just right click this one and click copy asset ID. All we do is go back to the leaf texture, so surface appearance, and then go to properties and just paste this within roughness map. And then there you go. This is before and after, and it just gets rid of that shine. I don't like that shine. It's just, it's just really annoying. It doesn't make it look like it's a, like a drawing, but yeah, make it so it's white within roughness map so you can get that like flat cartoonish look. Uh -huh, there you go. This looks so much better. Now we just need the tree trunk. You can obviously make this better. I'm just going to get one from the toolbox because I don't really want to make this video very long. But and then yeah, um, I don't know how to do a tutorial on how to place the trees. You honestly just do whatever you think looks right. Make sure you look at every angle. I know here I mainly look at this one angle, but this is just for a tutorial. But if you're making an actual build, make sure you look at all around the tree. So yeah, keep that in mind. Look all around. Make sure it looks right at every angle. Okay, after adding in the leaves, let's go over the lighting settings. So go to lightings and then just go to properties. And over here, we're just gonna first change the ambient. Let's make it like a dark blue because the sky is blue. So let's just make a dark blue color. That's all you have to do for ambient. And then outdoor ambient. So again, let's just make it a blue color after we've done that. We're gonna make the, like these light parts over here, um, like yellow, cause it's sunny. In order to do that, you change the color shift top. So this one right here. Uh, let's just make it like a yellowish color and it's all you have to do. That's usually what I do when I want like a sunny um, area. Just make the color shift top yellow and then make the ambient colors a dark blue. That's for like daylight lighting. And yeah, once you have this. Now what I like to do is just change the environment diffuse and specular scale. These just show more shadow. So like the top one, the one above here right here, this is like more shadow. Cause like, I feel like enough, not enough shadow showing. So I just lower these down a bit and then go back to the color shift top and the ambient colors after I do this. All right, there you go. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to change the brightness and yeah, I'll, I, the color shift top is too intense now. So I just lower that a bit down. Maybe I'll increase the exposure up a bit to get even brighter. All right, that's good. Now let's add a color correction. Click a plus next to lighting and add in the color correction. Go to properties within color correction. And then we're gonna just, we're just gonna change it up. I usually like just put 0 0.05 for each of them and then change each to whichever. I'm actually gonna decrease the contrast a bit, uh, lower the brightness because I increased the exposure. And for anime, like their saturation is pretty high. So I'm gonna increase that up a bit. And there you go. That's basically my color correction. I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do for the lighting. Oh, you can also add a bloom. I forgot to do that, but yeah, you can add bloom. And this is the part that I left out in the previous video, but I'm gonna explain it now. Uh, basically you just wanna put a light part or a light point at the top of this. So yeah, just get this invisible part right here. And then we're gonna add a light point to this. Um, I usually do this in FBX, but I'll show how to do it in Explorer. So just click the plus next to the part and then add in a point light or a light point, a point light. 
and, and then just go to properties and then you adjust the settings here. But I'm going to do these settings within the FGX plugin because I'm just used to the FGX plugin. I'll leave a link in the description for this FGX plugin. So yeah, it's the same as the one that, that was in Explorer. But yeah, well, let's just change the settings within FGX because I like using that more. Anyways, we're going to make the light color the same leaf color. So yeah, there you go. And then you just adjust the range and brightness to whatever you think looks right. And look at that. That looks so nice. I realized it's basically just changing the colors within the shadows of the leaves, which is pretty interesting. And with that, I can make it look less dull. Yeah, I think that's good. There you go. But yeah, that's without it. And that's with it. it looks so nice. This is what I left in the previous video, but I'm explaining it now. So yeah, that's how you get a no more gatekeeping. That's that's how it's done. Since it's sh changing the shadow colors, I'm actually going to get another light point and put it underneath here and just make this a blue color. I'm going to decrease the brightness and the range a bit because I don't really want the light to be hitting the ground. I just want it to be touching the shadows right here in the leaves. Now, here's the difference before and after. This is what I, again, this is left out in the previous video, but I'm letting you guys know now. But yeah, that's like the secret in making it really nice looking. And yeah, you have this for every single tree that you have in your game. Just note that these lights could affect the, like the surrounding area of your build. So just keep that in mind. Maybe decrease the range so it doesn't affect as much. But yeah, that's how you get those cool lights and make it look even better looking. This honestly looks really flat. It looks like an actual drawing, which I'm pretty happy about. Now, what's great about this is that you can actually change the leaf texture. So you, you can get like a, you basically can get a different kind of leaf without even going into Blender and making it again. So basically what I'm saying is, let's change this leaf texture and it'll be easy to do so. So like, for example, um, I want to use this more polished looking out leaf texture instead of these ones that I made in the beginning. In order to do that, first, let's just get the new leaf texture ID. So I'm just going to copy it and then you want to go and open up each of the planes, each of the bushes, and then you select all of the server's appearances to easily do that. Select the top one, hold shift and select the bottom one. And now they're all selected. So like if I delete and, and on delete, you can see I have them all selected. Now go to properties and where's this right here? Like and subscribe. Oh, um, you should do that. Anyways, all you have to do is just change the color map. So I'm just going to paste it. And there you go. I basically got a, like a new kind of tree without having to go in Blender, which is so nice. But yeah, there you go. It's so like versatile. You don't have to go back in Blender and make a new one. Just change up the texture, the leaf texture, and that's it. The only problem with this leaf texture is that it doesn't have the blur, so it looks kind of sharp. But if you like the sharp look, then just keep it sharp and don't do the blurs. Honestly, the main takeaway for this one is like adding in this point light. It's so, it makes it so much better. I don't really see it being told a lot in a lot of YouTube tutorials, but I'm telling you with this one, this is the trick, added in the point link. It's something that I learned by myself and I'm telling you for free. So maybe do consider liking and subscribing because I'm giving away my tips that I'm learning and I'm giving it out for free. Now that's that part of the video talking about how to make stylized trees. Now let's cover how to make stylized anything, which is a bit more complex, but let's cover it. All right, let's figure out how to make stylized rocks. Since the video is being a bit too long, I'm going to sort of go fast. I'll tell you the general steps in doing it, but I'm going to skip some parts. But again, I'll let you know the general steps. Let's first make our rock shape. So what I usually do is just get a cube and you really want to just make the shape of a rock. What you can do is use the edge select tool right here, select any edges and then press control B to bevel and just keep using that to make like your shape along with going to the face select tool, select any faces and then using S or E to extrude. So a combination of those two, try to make your rock shape. I'll try to do that now. All right, here's like my general rock shape. Now, honestly, it can really be anything. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it like this for this for the sake of this tutorial. If you're struggling with that and you can't do that yourself, here's another method that'll basically do it for you. All right, for this other method, let's add in a cube. So add mesh and then cube, and then go to this gear icon. We're gonna add in a subdivision modifier, and then we're gonna change its viewport to four. We're gonna add another modifier, and we're gonna add a displace modifier. Click new underneath displace modifier. Click this checkered icon, and after you click on the checkered icon, we're gonna change its type. Change this type to Voiroidnoid. I don't know if I said that right, but click on it. And then we're going to change its size to one, somewhere around one. Now, there you go, you got your rock shape. If you don't like it still, then go back to the gear icon, or this winch icon, and then change the viewport display or or and the size. So change those both up to your rock shape. But I'm going to leave it like this, like I have right now. Now, after I do that, um, I'm going to go to the wrench icon and just apply both the modifiers by clicking the arrow then clicking apply then go back to edit mode and you'll see that there's a lot of like polygons it's too much i don't want that so in order to fix that let's go back to the wrench icon and add a decimate modifier then just lower down the ratio till you keep your shape but all the vertices are lessened so something like that is good i'm gonna apply it now switch to edit mode now make sure you have vertices selected the vertices selection selected now in edit mode you want to select the vertices of the center of each face so like this face right here we're gonna press C and then just select the vertices again 
where it's like the middle of the face. We're gonna press M and then press at center. This is done to like flatten the faces and make them look less bumpy. And let's do it to the rest. And then when you're done, go back to object mode, select your rock, right click it, and then click shade smooth. Click this green triangle right here and enable auto smooth. And then you can adjust this to however you want. Now you can do either method, this one, which is the method I just told you, or this one where you just do it yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and just do the, the one I just did myself because that's the one I'm used to. Um, even though I feel like the second method looks kind of better, like the rock shape looks better. But anyways, we're just gonna go with this one. Now let's get to texturing. Before we get to texturing, we need like a base for our texture. So like this is a rock, so I need like a rock based texture. Now in order to get our rock based texture, I'm gonna make it within Clip Studio Paint. You can use any other photo editing software. I just like using this one because it has my brushes. We're just gonna do like the rock texture itself. So just make it so it's this bluish kind of grayish color because I want my rock to be this kind of color. And then I honestly just gonna do like random splotches and random different colors to add variation so my rock doesn't look really boring. Again, you can do this exact thing in any other software. It's just random splotches of the same-ish kind of color just all scattered around randomly. So yeah, just make something like this in any software and let's save it. Okay, after you saved it, let's go to UV editing and let's open up the texture. So there's my texture and now let's add it to our rock. Now let's go to edit mode, click on this red circle right here, click new, click the yellow next to the yellow circle next to base color, image texture, this little icon right here, and then select our rock base. Now click this down arrow and click texture. Now you can see your texture. I'm also actually gonna make it flat, so it will be brighter. Now we'll have this. The texture does not look correct. In order to fix that, press A, U, and this is all within edit mode. And then click on Smart UV Project. And there you go. Now we can actually hand paint it. So let's go to the texture paint over here to add even more detail. I'm gonna press this arrow right here and then click on specular lighting or uncheck it because I don't want those shines to be showing as I'm hand painting. Uh, again, also you can change to studio or flat depending on what you want to do when you're painting or when you're hand painting. But yeah, I'm gonna stick to flat for now. Now you can leave it like this. With rocks, one thing you can do is adding some white within the edges. So in order to do that, let's click this arrow right here and enable cavity. You see how there's like white lines at the edge of everything you want to like add that in yourself using textures so let's get a, let's just color drop the base color that we have and just lighten it up a bit and then just go over the edges you don't have to do every edge just some of them and then you can turn off the cavity and just see the white line that you made and there you go you do something like that for like every edge or just some of the edges not all of them And there you go, adding those white things on the edges really makes it, like it sells that sharp look that rocks have. Now that you have this, you can also add grass on top of it. So let's do that. Let's get like a grass color. And there you go, look at that, it looks really good. Also, also, if you're gonna be texture painting in Blender, you should always click image and save, or save as at first and then save. You should always save your texture because Blender does not auto save your textures. So yeah, keep on saving your textures, remember that. Because if you don't, you might lose all your progress. Now, this is basically it. This is how you make stylize anything. The most important thing from this tutorial is just get like a base texture on to whatever, and then just redraw it or draw on top of it using texture paint within Blender. And I know there's better methods out there, like people use Substance Painter and such, but this is my method. This is just the method I've been doing, and I like it. You can bring this into Roblox Studio, so just file. Oh, before you do that, again, make sure you save it. So I'm gonna save it again. Now we click File, Export, and just save it as an FBX. Make sure you save the FBX file and the texture in the same folder. That way, texture and the actual model will be imported together in Roblox Studio. All right, in Roblox Studio, just import 3D and let's open it. There you go, it's uploaded with my texture, so I'm just gonna import this. There you go, that's how you do like, stylized stuff. I'm gonna do one more quick example to briefly show what the steps are. So I'll do that one more time very quickly so you get a better understanding. Let's do stylized wood fence go first we model it which will just be that then we're gonna get our base texture i'm just gonna grab them from google for the sake of time apply that base texture onto our 3d model then paint over it using texture paint in blender i'm gonna make three variants of the wood plank and then just build it within roblox studio after i'm done save the texture along with the actual file of the 3d model and bring it into roblox studio and there you go made my fence along with this wooden crate there you go i follow like the general steps to make my stylized assets so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing or at least leaving a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to respond. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.